Good evening, less than a month left of the Barclays Women's Super League season and a two-horse race continues to grip us all. We've got five matches for you tonight. Could Manchester City overtake Chelsea at the top after their midweek win against Aston Villa gave them the narrowest of advantages over their northwest rivals? Chelsea playing catch-up, three points behind Manchester City. A win against Aston Villa and they will replace them. Nushkin has gone for the early hit. Annalie, a straight red card. Not good news for her or Aston Villa. Oh, good try, what a goal. Aggie Beaver-Jones with a beauty. There's the second. Havano on target for Chelsea corner for Chelsea and we're looking to make absolutely sure of the points and they have done now and Chelsea go coasting back to the top of the WSL table yes impressive stuff well City could go back to the top as they welcomed a struggling West Ham Arsenal could wrap up the third European spot with a win over Leicester and a dress rehearsal to next month's FA Cup final as Tottenham travelled to Manchester United. While dissecting all the action alongside me tonight, Northern Ireland manager Tanya Oxterby and England legend Rachel Yankee. Evening both, be back with you very shortly. But first, separated at the top only by goal difference, Manchester City knew anything other than a win at home to West Ham would be a huge blow to their title hopes. On commentary duty, Rachel Brown Finnis and Flo Pollock. Team news then for Manchester City. One change from their last league game, which was over two weeks ago, and it's a forced change. Kirsten Kasparai suspended and replaced by Leia Wuhabi, who saw red last time these sides faced each other. Kiara Keating fit enough to start in goal. She was a doubt after dropping out from the England setup. Bunny Shaw leads the line, the league's top goal scorer with 19 goals. As for West Ham, Rianne Skinner makes two changes from the nil-nil with Brighton. Howard Sissoko comes back into the back line and Jess Zoo starts. Out comes Emma Harries and Emma Snurler. No place in the squad for Kirsty Mewis, who still isn't fit enough. And Manchester City get us underway, looking to go top of the WSL. Jess Park on the front foot already. Slides it out to the right. Slid through brilliantly for Jess Park. Park in the box, beats a player across goal. And it's in! Manchester City take the lead within a minute. Leo were happy with the finish. Well, barely have West Ham had a touch. Look at the gaps. It's so, so easy to dispatch that. See Jess Park just jinks around, cuts it back. Absolute textbook as to where Wuhabi should be, penalty spot. And it's the simplest of starts, West Ham are asleep. Alana Kennedy on the ball. Sprays it out to the left-hand side for Lauren Hemp. Options in the middle. Gets the ball across, looking for Shaw. Just it down on the volley! Bunny Shaw! What a finish! Manchester City flying. A 20th league goal for Khadija Bunnishaw. It's a carbon copy of the first goal. This first one, just parked down the right. Second, exactly long ball from the centre half, diagonal precision into space down the channel. Bit of clever jinking, beautiful hold up play from Khadija Shaw, just shoves off a defender, creates that space. And a finish into exactly the top corner of Mackenzie Arnold's goal. C. 
City coming forward through Mary Fowler. Square to Park. It's out now with Hemp. Hemp with a delivery. And the header from Buddy Shaw. What a finish from a fantastic player. 50 WSL goals for Khadija Bunny Shaw. The second quickest player to reach that total after Viviana Miedemar. And both those goals, Rachel Bramford, is excellent. It's like trying to mark a mountain in there with regards to the strength. The way she bulldozes her way onto this one, the technical execution as well. Again, it's lovely build-up play, precision pass from Jess Park. And Lauren Hems drops the shoulder, dinks it in, and there's just no one else winning that ball. Asagawa trying to play it out. Oh, that's fallen nicely for Ueki. Ueki on the edge of the box, blocked by Kennedy. Still alive, though. Heathered back across goal, Vivian Asayi. Great stop by Keating. Point blank range. West Ham's first shot on target. And she kept switched on. The hardest job for a goalkeeper when you've got nothing to do. You take huge pride in keeping that ball out your net. Oh, Ueki through for West Ham here. Rico Ueki, great block from Alex Greenwood. And on the follow-up, effort comes in from Zoo, takes a deflection off the crossbar. West Ham inches away from getting a goal back just before the first half whistle. Excellent there by Lauren Hamp. And it's City now that break forward. A last chance at the end of this first half. Jess Park busting along to get there. Jess Park for City! Good save. Pushed round the corner by Mackenzie Arnold. What drama in this last two minutes of injury time. Mayhem in the box, Kiara Keaton. And what a counter-attack it was. Lauren Hemp just slides out to Jess Park. He drills it hard and low across the goalkeeper. And this is the mayhem in the box. How on earth this didn't go in? Jessica Zhu gets a deflection off Wahabi. Khadija Bunny Shaw down on the turf. It looks to be in some pen, holding her knee, which is not a sight you ever want to see. I don't think it was from a challenge. That's even more worrying. Confirmation then that Khadija Bunny Shaw is coming off and replacing her is Chloe Kelly, England's Chloe Kelly. Jess Park, one back by Ueki. Asayi's making the run to her right, slides it into Asayi. Asayi with the effort, off the post again from West Ham. A really good chance for the French international. So she cut in on her left, made something out of not a lot. A let off for City. West Ham's Ueki pulls the trigger. And again, it hits the woodwork. That's three times West Ham have hit the woodwork. Well, this time it's City who needs to wake up in the opening moments. And say he has looked dangerous. It's a lovely execution. And this one from distance, Ueki. It's going to be something extremely special to have beaten Kiara Keaton. City giving them so much space. This is where very little possession for West Ham starts to tell on your legs, chasing and start to tie up. Nice ball, Mary Fowler, cross goal. Blinkiller Brown with the finish. Her first goal in a Manchester City shirt. Manchester City four, West Ham United nil. It's a good little bit of skill, Mary Fowler give and go. Pass from Chloe Kelly, squared by Mary Fowler. And the happy recipient of that simple tap in from seven yards is Blinkilda Brown. Jess Park's done well there. Driving forward. Jess Park with the effort. Wonderful finish. Low hard into the bottom corner. City's fifth. Gareth Taylor with a big grin on his face. Wow, this is everything that Jess Park deserves. What a rounded performance. 
here, Sissoko just steps in, she jinks around her, and then it's full speed ahead. Look at that for a perfect strike. Mackenzie Arnold gets a fraction of a hand on it. It's never going to be enough to turn that around the post. And that is it, there is the full-time whistle. Magnificent Manchester City go top of the Women's Super League. They've beaten West Ham by five goals to nil. Really pleased with the performance. Thought we started the game tremendously well. The quality of the goals we scored, the first two especially. So that was really pleasing and gave us a good platform to speak at half-time about what we wanted to achieve in the second half. And we started a little bit slower and a bit sluggish uh, after giving so much in the first half. But yeah, to score two towards the end was really, really important for us. I think the positives to take out of it, we've created five clear-cut chances with it. You know, the woodwork three times. I think the biggest thing is just not, we've not taken those chances at that moment. And so they're far more clinical than what we are. And that's obviously what's led to the scoreline. A key player to you who has had a massive impact today, Bunny Shaw. Any news on, on how the injury is? No, not at the moment. I think it always looks worse when they're on crutches, but that's just to offload them. It was touch and go whether she was going to come back on at half time, which gives a sense of maybe it's not too serious, but we'll have to see. Yeah, City fans will have been concerned to see Bunny Shaw limping off the way she did. More on her in a moment, but this was a really convincing win from Manchester City. They knew they needed goals. But even by their standards, Tanya, this first one was pretty quick, wasn't it? It was. They flew out the blocks. And I think, you know, if you're you're heading up there, the last thing you want to do is concede early doors. Um, and, yeah, I, th I thought West Ham um, really struggled in the first instance. And they were chasing the game from there. So, you know, just a, a long diagonal ball in here. Um, you know, West Ham looked to drop off and deal with the first one. But then they never really deal with the second one. And Jess Park... She was a, a thorn in their side all day. Um, she pulled the strings, and you can see here she's she's just floating between the lines, picks up the ball in a great pocket of space, and everything positive came through her. And that cutback zone there, you know, West Ham dropping really, really deep, and it's a it's a great finish and a fantastic start. Yeah, just part player of the match today. If you're Rianne Skinner, you're watching on. Your team concedes in less than a minute. You're tearing your hair out. You're thinking, right, we've got 89 minutes to go. There's plenty to go in this game, and then. They can see it again two minutes later. Lovely celebration here, by the way. Sandy McIver's name on the back of the shirt. The City goalkeeper has just come back. Well, just had an operation after tearing her ACL. You're Rianne Skinner. Your, your team concedes two minutes later. And it's all down to Bunny Shaw, this mm. woman. And how good was she this afternoon, Rachel? Because she scored her 21st WSL goal of the season, her 50th WSL goal of her career. Incredible. In such a short space of time as well to score these goals. I mean... It was tough for her at the beginning coming into to Man City's team and, and sort of finding your place, but now she's found it. She is she's flying. I think you look at her movement, her drive, you know, I think the understanding between her and the wide players, you know, you know what Lauren Hemp's gonna do here. Great cross into the box. She's in between the two defenders where she likes to be with that touch there, taking it away. What a finish. That's that's absolutely unbelievable. I think just shows her class. She, you know, she's such a great player. Again, staying in that central area, same thing, fantastic cross. What a powerful header there. You know, she knows where the defender is all the time. She's, you know, she's feeling it. She's, she's happy to have that physical battle. I suppose this is the one wor worry for, for Manchester City. I know that they, you know, Gareth Taylor said that it was... Uh, not, not as bad as it looks, but uh, I don't know, it looks pretty bad, to be honest. How impressed have you been with her this season, Tanya? She's unplayable at the minute, you know, and, and you look at how tightly West Ham are marking her mm. there and doubling up almost in, in the central areas, and it doesn't phase her, um, you know, and, it, and it's so, so difficult, you I know. I think she likes that battle. She though, enjoys she? it, yeah. she enjoys it, and, and she, you know, look, they're, they're two fantastic finishers, and let's hope that, you know, she's uh, available for the, for the run-in for the season because... I thought after she went off, City kind of um, took a little while to adjust and, and have to um, adapt their style of play a little bit. Yeah, City's afternoon got better and better, didn't it? Two lovely finishes. Blind Kill Brown got her first goal for the club and then Jess Park on the goal scoring sheet as well. Yeah, what, what I really like about this, this build up to this goal is uh, Man City draw almost five of the West Ham players into that wide area and then that cutback space is open again. It was it was open all, all day and um, Jess Park, as I said in the in the first instance, you know, picking the ball up, driving, um, you know, straight at the heart of, of West Ham there and, you know, that's the type of finish you want to see, right? This is the kind of player I want yeah. to see play. This is just, this is a player with confidence, you know. She, she's come back 
obviously the loan spell at Everton, got games. She now looks like she, she wants to stamp her authority and say, I want to be a main starter for this team. I thought that was a, she had a fantastic performance, but that goal was a fantastic goal. West Ham defence, questions will be asked as to what went wrong today, but they did have their own chances to score, didn't they? They did, they had a really good chance just before half time and I think if they take that opportunity, this one here, you've got to finish that for me. Um, you know, you're going away from home and you get an opportunity like that, you've got to finish and I think you go in, um, you know, at half time uh, in, a, in a more hopeful position and look, I thought that was a, a good shout for a penalty there, let alone hitting the woodwork. So yeah. They hit the woodwork a few times. I mean. To be fair, you have to kind of think, if these, these fine margins, if they go in, this game's a cracking game because it could be any score. Um, it's but that it, start that really cost them, isn't it? It is, and, it, and it's the momentum of the game. It really, it threw them. If they'd got that, that first opportunity just after Man City scored, um, if West Ham had gone up the other end and scored, this game could have been crazy, but it's, it is those fine opportunities. Well, that City result keeps the title race very interesting. Chelsea played Villa midweek, 1-3-0, but Villa had their goalkeeper sent off in the opening four minutes. If you're Chelsea and you're playing a team with 10 play players for the majority of the game, are you disappointed you only score three? I think if you're Chelsea, you're disappointed. <laughs> um, the fact that Chelsea totally changed their team. Uh, there's so many players that possibly don't usually start coming into that game. Maybe you're not disappointed because they've got game time, they've got match time. Maybe you're looking for something else. Um, and it is difficult to, to then combine and come together and, and play against the team with, with 10 players. But as you're Chelsea, the reigning champions, you, you're looking to play against Aston Villa. I would think that you, once their goalkeeper goes off, that you would be thinking that you get more goals than that. Well, the reason that Chelsea were playing midweek is because on Saturday they took on Barcelona in the Champions League semi-final. They won 1-0. They're the first team to win at Barcelona, Tanya, in five years. Half the job is done. As someone who previously coached or helped coach this team, you must have been incredibly proud. The performance was exceptional. I thought, you know, the, the goal, um, Aaron Cuthbert's goal was, was amazing. But the defensive display, the way they limited Barcelona's opportunities, um, you know, they'll be really, really pleased with that. And uh, you, you've heard all the players and the staff talk about it's half the job done. And, you know, I'm really, really excited to see how they now sort of tackle um, the home home leg. And, you know, they're in a great position now. And, uh, yeah, really, really pleased for them, um, you know, to go away and break that record in terms of, I think it's five years or something like that. You know, it's, it's a special performance from them. Yeah, the players are like very clear on social media. This is Erin Cuthbert's Instagram. Rachel, next weekend then at Stamford Bridge, is it do the same thing again? Or do they have to approach it slightly differently? It's so hard. I mean, it, they've got to approach it differently because now they're one up. They've got everything to lose. Um, it, it's it's a mental battle, and, and Barcelona they're going to come out and they know at times they they're going to come at you, and you've got to weather that storm. But same defensive job because I thought they were excellent. But uh, yeah, it's it's a difficult one, and I think you've just got to. You've got to really stay focused and believe that you can get through. Um, the, the ultimate prize is, is at the end of it, getting to that final, which they will definitely want to do again. Absolutely. Next weekend is going to be a huge match for Chelsea. As for Arsenal, they were back at the Emirates Stadium to face Leicester in front of another impressive crowd of over 42,000. The Gunners were looking to cement third place and keep their slim title hopes alive. Watching on, Adam Inca. Katie McCabe, the only new face in the 11. The big news for Arsenal is the two on the bench, Miedemar and Leonardson Mornham, both return. For Leicester, one change from that FA Cup semi final defeat a week ago. French international Julie Thibault is back at the heart of the defence. Josie Green drops to the bench as a result. Jutta Rantela has been the star of the show this season. Leicester's top scorer has six goals in the Barclays Women's Super League. Well, Arsenal have won all five of the previous Barclays Women's Super League meetings with Leicester City by an aggregate score of 20 to 2. Well, that was a fierce drive. Mamiki unleashing. And Zinsberger gives the fans here at the Emirates something to cheer about. Wonderful stop. Here is Little. No real tempo about this Arsenal attack. Mead looking to change that here. Quick pass. Nicely done by Arsenal. And Mead is in. And there's the opening goal of the game. And the goal that the Arsenal fans came to.
to see here at the Emirates. It was measured, almost rehearsed. And Beth Mee continues her brilliant run of form. Linking up ever so well with Caitlin Ford here. And lifting over Lisa Kopp. And into the back of the Leicester net. To make it Arsenal 1, Leicester 0. Here is Rancela. One of Leicester's standout performers this season in the Barclays Women's Super League. Well, she's looking to connect with a teammate and she's found Mamiki here. And now Rose, who can control, and Tierney brings out the best from Manuela Zinsberger. It's a big palm in the end from Arsenal's goalkeeper, who is able to prevent the effort from Tierney going any further towards the goal line. Fox again, forward on the right. And looking to cause some problems here for the Leicester defence and very nearly does exactly that with an angle drive that was fired up towards the top corner and well saved in the end by Lisa Kopp. And now here comes the noise because here comes the change. A relatively quiet afternoon by her standards for Stina Blackstenius. Anything but quiet though as Leonard Mornum who collapsed in the Conti Cup final game, returns to the field for Arsenal. Arsenal doing everything they can to keep on the pressure on those above them in the table. Brilliant run here by Catley. Determination to find Russo! There is a second goal for Arsenal by Alessia Russo. Well, she spent most of the game playing as a deep line playmaker. With Baxtenius off of the field, she switched to a more familiar number nine role. And she strikes the blow here. That gives Arsenal breathing room in this tie. Arsenal two, Leicester City nil. Arsenal have experienced some pretty good results here at the Emirates in 2024. Win against Manchester United, 3-1 victory. And then a win over North London rivals Tottenham here as well. A one goal to nil victory. Brilliant football from Arsenal. The angle is there for another attack. This time Russo is denied. Arsenal won't be though. There is goal number three. And a second of the afternoon for Beth Mead. Devastating stuff from Arsenal. Ramping things up at the end of this game. They've been made to wait by an organised Leicester City side, but they just couldn't keep them out here. Russo with a big chance, but then she did enough to feed it back into the six-yard box. And who was there waiting? Her England teammate, Beth Mead, with a lovely chip. Arsenal's excellent end-of-season form continues. Beth Mead with two in a measured Arsenal performance. He should be very happy. Arsenal three, Leicester nil is how it finishes here at the Emirates. Leicester is a very competitive team. What we changed and we got more successful in the second half is the way that we press them. I think they get a little bit too much joy of playing out from the back in the first half and I think we suffocate them better in the second half. For some reason, we, we deviated a little bit from the game plan, and, and that's what opened up. And look, we gifted them the second and third goal, which is which is hugely disappointing. And look, they're the bits that we need to work on and make sure that we're concentrated for the 90 minutes because we do all that hard work, and those moments of switching off is is what ends up costing us. Yeah, pretty comprehensive win for Arsenal then in the end. One area that really impressed today was this link-up play between Leah Williamson and Beth Mead. And a prime example of that, Tanya, is this opening goal. Yeah, look, I think they're two players that they've obviously missed throughout the season and, um, you know, the, the understanding that they both have um, with each other is, is clear and Fox holding the width out on the right-hand side in this game allowed Beth Mead to come inside and time and time again we saw this pattern here where she's coming inside and picking up the ball and able to face forward and, you know, it's... Uh, 
it's really, really difficult in terms of if, if you've got a player holding the width in the in the wide area, allowing me to, someone like me coming inside with her quality there. Like Williamson knows that she's doing going to do that. She knows what the pass is, and you know the trust that they seem to have is. Uh, you know, it's it's kind of second to none, really. It's yeah. just those relationships that you that you build and you form it's um, all over from the time. The training ground, isn't yeah. it? I mean, you can see the way that they move, even like Ford there coming in on it. The, the passes, the weight of the passes, everything has been been well drilled. On paper today, the result looked comfortable, but it actually took until the 75th minute for them to score their second goal, Rachel. Yeah, I mean, Leicester started really well, and, you know, they had opportunities. Um, you know, they look confident. Just, I mean, it must be a tough time at Leicester, you know, coming in and a uh, new manager sort of taking over. And then you've got to go and play Arsenal <laughs> at the Emirates with that such a fantastic crowd and, and goals. I think you see the Russo goal there. It's, you know, she's a player that really... Passionate drives off of those goals, and just I think you know Arsenal when they're at this stadium in front of these fans, they want to put on a performance, they want to score goals. I love this finish. So just cool that, and calm, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, that finish is unbelievable. But they they want to do that when 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 they're able to play at the Emirates, and I think that is a massive boost to this Arsenal team playing at that stadium. Well, look, that result secures third European spot for Arsenal. Just like last year, they'll have Champions League football and they've won the League Cup. But with the squad that they've got, is that enough? <laughs> um, no, no, if we're honest. I think the squad that they've got, uh, they, should be, they should be pushing to win the league. Um, and they should be doing better in the Champions League. But I think when you look at it, you've, you're winning a cup, Continental Cup, and you're getting into Champions League. You've got to be, you've got to be satisfied with that, and you've got to show that that can prove to work more efficiently for the future. You can, you can talk to your players and, and keep them, but you've got to be wanting more. Yeah, I think the players would would want more. You know, I think with the squad that they've got, as you said, um, they'll want more, and uh, you know they'll learn from this experience this season, and I think that will drive them to be even more hungry for next se next season as well. Well, look, thoughts of the FA Cup final for Manchester United and Tottenham were put to one side as they met at Lee Sports Village. Spurs had lost all four previous away trips to the Reds, conceding at least three goals on each occasion. Commentary comes from Ben Andrews. Sumanen. Milden. And two. Lindbergh, that was really nicely taken. She's got the better of Eva Manny, and that's a real teaser. And it's over the bar from Bethany England. <laughs> Zellum would usually take it, but this is going to be Evans, left footed into Mallard and in. <laughs> Becky Spencer came and didn't get there. And Manchester United lead. Melvy Mallard into an empty net. Great delivery from Gemma Evans. Well, we know Naz is quick. Quick enough to beat Turner to it. That's a good ball. And it's a really good chance. And Finberg's a long way away from it. Suman and back to. James Turner, they've uh, pressurised the mistake here, Mallard could be in for another, that's a better stop from Spencer. And with Nikita Paris closing in, the whistle goes. Finberg delivering deep, Drew Spence arriving and in! Little touch in the middle from Bethany England and Tottenham a level. The drive through the crowd from Drew Spence. And England in front of Earps. And it's 1 1. Well then into Suman. Well, everyone's left. That will see for Manny and Derek. Here's Vinberg. And Naz. Manchester United playing catch up here. Oh, they're really playing catch up because Naz has scored. Two goals in less than two minutes to flip this game right around. A real mess from Manchester United and a really cool finish from Jess Naz.
corner into the crowd. And Katie Zellum got up there, Neville in the way. And Nelson was there too. And Becky Spencer desperately trying to get up there. It is off the frame of the goal, that close to a United equaliser. A bit of fortune for Spurs. And Mary Earps is up. A couple of minutes into stoppage time. Now or never for Manchester United, you feel, in comes the corner. There's Williams, it's off the bar. And it's bundled in. Letizia. In the second minute of stoppage time. 2-2. Two -two. They always find a way, and they have here. I think we did a brilliant first half and uh, played some really good football and scored some nice goals. And then the second half, Man United you know, came with a lot of energy and pushed us down. Uh, we defended very well though, but they scored a goal in the last minute and then of course you are very disappointed. The team have done it too many times now. We have shown on countless occasions that we have that, that kind of resilience, that mentality that if we need a goal, we're going to push, push, push. And look, you're not always going to score, right? But what I think we can work on from today is the fact that the two goals conceded are not what, what we're about. It's not our standards and we've got to be better at that. Yeah, so that was a practice run for the FA Cup final next month. Today, the points were shared. It was a fairly scrappy affair. But let's start with this opening goal then, Rachel, from Millard. Is this a really good header or is this some questionable defending? <laughs> it's probably a little bit of both, to be honest. I mean, there you, you would want your defenders to, to know where the player is. I mean, nobody knows where that striker is. She's, it's a free header, really. But, yeah, I mean, you, you, you'd have to question... The defending of Tottenham, you've got to lock on a player, a uh, goalkeeper coming out. But um, I'm, I'm not a defender. I'm going to go with that. that was a really good header. Yeah, you go with that was a great, great header. And I'll say, I, I think, you know, if you're going to be zonal, um, which it looks like they were there, you can't allow a free run through. And if you're man marking, then she's obviously lost, lost yeah. her um, completely there. And I'm not sure the keeper needs to come for that either. So, yeah. Well, I'm sure there's analysis yeah, to be done. Yeah, there is, yeah. <laughs> well, look, basically, all these players are now playing for places in that cup final. Someone who impressed you today was Matilda Vinberg. What was it about her that you thought was so special? Yeah, I thought everything um, you know positive um, down this left-hand side obviously went through her for Tottenham, and I thought um, you know she was she was intricate but direct at the same time. I know mm -hmm. they're a bit of a contradiction to each other, but you see here she you know she knows where where Beth England is and, and puts a, a great ball in in behind for her and. You know, the, the little bit of um, deception here to be able to put a, a great ball in the box um, leads to, to Tottenham's um, goal. And look, I think, you know, sh she'll be, uh, wouldn't have done herself any harm in terms of putting um, her, her case forward for a, for a starting place yeah, in that final. Definitely. I think you, what you want to do is you want to make an impact. And she definitely made an impact. She caused a problem um, to Manchester United's right back. And, you know, it was... It, it was a good game, I think, from her. She's, she's put herself there. I think this game is all about putting yourself in the shop window to the manager because everybody wants to play an FA Cup final day. Yeah, United scrambling to get an equaliser in injury time from Letizia. If you're Mark Skinner, not that happy with this performance? No, but you'd be happy with this. I mean, you'd be proud that your players have the desire and passion to go in for a header like that because that's just absolute thunderous we will you know he talks about the mentality i know but th like we will not lose desire. this game the desire yeah. to do that it's um you know that's commendable as a manager if you know you're playing this team in a month's time in this huge fa cup final how much of today would have been about sussing out your opposition and how much how many tricks would you have left in the box I think both managers have been really clear that they have a certain way that they want to play in a certain style that they believe in and I think because of that they're not going to deviate too much. I think maybe sort of the, the restarts or you know corner routines things like that you'll probably hold a little bit of that back um, you know with with the final in mind but you'd expect both teams to, to come out today and, and sort of lay their cards on the table um, for, for me. So knowing both managers, they, they like their own style of play. So they, they want their players to go out and do that. Yes, the FA Cup final in May, it, of course, is going to be on the BBC. But now two more matches to bring you. Brighton welcomed Everton on Friday night. And Bristol City would be on the cusp of relegation back to the Championship should they lose at home to Liverpool. So Thurl brings us the action. Having lost their last 11 home matches in the Barclays WSL, Bristol City were low on confidence and it showed when a Shea Yanez clearance rebounded off Sophie Roman-Haug and so nearly handed Liverpool the initiative. 
Matt Beard's side, though, were swiftly into their stride and after a spell of sustained pressure, they took the lead in the 13th minute, thanks to Marie Herbinger's first-time strike. Liverpool thought they doubled their advantage when Roman Haug tapped in after Yanez had dropped to Taylor Hines' cross, but the referee had seen a foul. Herbinger's shooting prowess shone through yet again shortly after the break, but this time the woodwork came to the rescue for the home side. With Bristol City's survival hopes hanging by a thread, they had to find a little extra, and Amelie Testrup had the chance to generate just that. But there was no way past Tegan Micah as she and her teammates departed with all three points. I've said all along every time I've played them that they're a good side, you know, so from, from that perspective, Three points for us was important to bounce back after the um, Manchester City defeat. Um, Bristol deserve a lot of credit today because I thought they performed well, but then at the same time, I think we, when we had to, we defended fantastically. Brighton were looking to complete the league double over Everton for the first time in the Barclays WSL, but in a closely fought contest, it was the Toffees who broke the deadlock on the hour mark. Twins Karen and Sarah Holmgaard combining before substitute Karen applied the finishing touch. That lead was short-lived, though, thanks to an almost but not quite Maisie Simons free kick, which fell kindly to Tatiana Pinto just three minutes later. Both teams cancelled each other out for large parts of the contest, but the Seagulls would ultimately have their wings clipped thanks to a defensive error crossed wires at the back ended with Guro Bergsvand bundling the ball into her own net. 2-1, the final score. We got a little, little nervy at times, they come back, but then we, we, you know, we hit on straight away and uh, yeah, saw the game out uh, really well, so um, so good on that. We need to work on continue controlling, playing, keeping the ball, even that they throw everything at us because then it just means space are much more bigger to, to use. But uh, yeah, sometimes when you are where you are, three points is also just what, what's important. So another good win for Liverpool, who are now hot on the heels of Manchester United. Bristol, very, very close to relegation. Tanya, we've had you on the show many times this season. As someone who's previously coached this team, we always ask you what's gone wrong. But let's flip it and say, what are the positives they can take from this year? Yeah, look, they've they've played, um, you know, I think the most teenagers in their squad across the season. They've got a young squad. Um, if they can keep that squad together and continue to, to develop those players, I think they're going to be in with a, a really good opportunity in the next couple of years. Increased crowds, um, you know, the support for them at, at home has been sensational. And facilities, I think, you know, they're, they're in a really good place now in terms of their training facilities. So there's massive positives for Bristol and the squad is together. You can see that in the way that they, they fight for each other and you know um, whilst it's going to be really tough for them to stay up I, I think there's some some massive learnings and some massive positives from this season for them. And Rachel in terms of Brighton and Everton they're both safe so what do these next three games until the end of the season hold for them? I think it's just about gelling the squad I think getting used to how you're playing I think well definitely for Everton they've you know the managers just signed a new contract it's about making sure that your squad understands what you what you want to do and I think for both teams really just working on preparing for the for the next season and just making sure that you can you can push on well let's take a look at what that all means in the Barclays women's super league table and Manchester City have a three-point lead over Chelsea who have a game in hand but City with the superior goal difference now Arsenal secure the third Champions League spot and remain an outside bet to lift the trophy themselves. Everton and Leicester are now mathematically safe from relegation. It would take a miracle for Bristol City to catch West Ham with three games remaining for both sides. In the Barclays Women's Championship, Crystal Palace knew they could secure promotion to the WSL for the very first time if they beat Lewis away. And the meeting between second place Sunderland and Charlton in third ended in a draw. Well, Sinead Hopcroft gave Palace the lead midway through the first half with this incredible strike. What a finish. Well, that put the visitors on their way. And Molly May Sharp secured the three points just after the break, meaning they have all but secured the title.
And that's because elsewhere, Charlton won 1-0 away at Sunderland, meaning Palace technically haven't secured top spot just yet. In the other matches, there was also 1-0 wins for Blackburn, Reading and Birmingham, while Southampton saw off London City Lionesses 3-1. So Palace are three points clear of Charlton with a much, much better goal difference. So it would require some outrageous results on the final day of the season next Sunday to prevent them from claiming top spot. Watford were already relegated and they've been joined now by Lewis after their defeat. Newcastle United and Portsmouth will replace those sides in the Women's Championship next season. And the Monday nightclub rounds off all the major talking points from the weekend's football action on Five Live Sport and BBC Sounds tomorrow evening from 7pm. Match today will have highlights of this week's Premier League action on Wednesday evening from 11.15 on BBC Two, Arsenal versus Chelsea and the Merseyside derby amongst others. And next weekend in the WSL we will have live coverage of the Gunners trip to Everton that Sunday 12.15 on BBC Two. Now, ahead of next weekend's matches, the Optus supercomputer gave Chelsea a 55% chance of retaining their title. Now you've seen all of the goals, where would you that put that percentage? 50-50 for me. Um, it's <laughs> too tight. There's too much to happen in this, uh, in this uh, run-in and, uh, yeah, it's going to be very, very interesting. Um, I think, knowing the games that they've got left, I'm going to go Man City. Oh, Ooh, I know, okay. I know. Well, I will leave you two to enjoy sitting on the bench. Thank you, as always, for your company. Well, in terms of points on the board, it's advantage Manchester City in the title race after a five-star performance to beat West Ham. We'll see you next time. Good night. Manchester City take the lead within a minute. What a finish! City's fourth. Wonderful finish. Magnificent Manchester City flying.